Welcome back. A telephone call was held between His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Majesty Sultan Haytham bin Tariq of Oman. Their Majesties exchanged congratulations on the approaching Eid al Fitr, and which is uh, for many returns of the occasion with more progress and prosperity for their countries and across the Arab and Islamic nations. A telephone call was held between His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Mishal Al Ahmed Al Jabal Al Sabah. His Majesty and His Highness exchanged congratulations on the approaching Eid Al Fitr and wishes for many happy returns of the occasion with more progress and prosperity for their countries. A telephone call took place between His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the President of Iraq, Dr. Abdul Latif Al Rashid. The two leaders exchanged congratulations on the approaching of Eid Al Fitr and wishes for many returns of the occasion with more progress and prosperity for their countries and across the Arab and Islamic nations. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a telephone call from the Grand Imam of Al Azhar Al Sharif, Dr. Sheikh Ahmed Al Tayyib. During the call, His Eminence Dr. Al Tayyib congratulated His Majesty the King on the approaching of Eid Al Fitr, wishing His Majesty many returns for the occasion with more progress and prosperity for Bahrain and across the Arab and Islamic nations. On the occasion of the Silver Jubilee of His Majesty the King's accession to the throne in Eid al Fitr, His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, issued a comprehensive royal decree pardoning 1,584 convicts of riot and criminal cases. The royal gesture in observance of Eid al Fitr underscores His Majesty the King's commitment to upholding Bahraini society's stability and safeguarding personal and civil rights. This gesture also emphasizes the importance of maintaining the rule of law, balancing punishment with the human and social circumstances and offering pardoned convicts the chance to successfully reintegrate into society. The Council of Representatives Speaker Ahmed al Salam expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King on the occasion of the issuance of the Comprehensive Royal Decree pardoning and releasing 1,584 convicts. al Salam affirmed that His Majesty's wise initiative reflects a royal wisdom and humanitarian vision that aims to enhance community cohesion and family bonding. He noted that the Royal Decree confirms uh, the closeness of His Majesty the King to his people and his keenness to provide the convicts with the opportunity for positive integration to society. The Speaker noted that the Royal Decree comes within the context of the royal vision to promote human rights and develop the human rights system in Bahrain. He expressed appreciation for the support and follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in fulfilling royal aspirations and promoting human rights. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali al Saleh, expressed thanks to His Majesty the King on the occasion of the issuance of the Comprehensive Royal Decree to pardon 1,584 convicts. Al Saleh affirmed that the royal pardon embodies the highest form of nobility and humanity and reflects the approach established by His Majesty the King to increase societal stability. He also noted that the royal pardon coincides with the approaching Eid al Fitr, which will have a profound impact on the convicts' families, stressing that His Majesty the King, with his continuous humanitarian Initiatives promotes the culture of tolerance and coexistence that characterizes Bahrain. Al Saleh expressed appreciation for the efforts of the government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and his keenness to implement the directives of His Majesty the King. The royal decrees of pardons and release of inmates in the Kingdom of Bahrain reflects the keenness of His Majesty the King to integrate those released into society to participate in the comprehensive development process of the Kingdom of Bahrain. More in this report. It is the parental spirit and the fatherly figure of His Majesty the King that aim at spreading joy to the soul of the Bahraini family. It is a royal custom represented by the royal pardon on special occasions and holidays. On the occasion of the Silver Jubilee of His Majesty's accession to the throne and coinciding with Eid al-Fitr holiday, the pardon comes based on the keenness of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa to enhance cohesion and solidarity to protect the social fabric of the kingdom and integrate the pardon in the comprehensive development process. Pardon is a tolerant value, one of the values of Islam, and the inmates who are convicted in various cases are people of this nation, and the leader of the nation always sees that the people of Bahrain are the engine of development, and their presence within their society and families restores social life to its normal process. His Majesty the King has always taken great care of the Bahraini family, as it is the main component and the building block of society. Since inmates are part of the Bahraini family, this pardon of His Majesty the King reflects Bahrain's high status and achievements in the field of human rights at the international level.
The Speaker of the R Parliament, Adel Osri, praised the issuance of the Royal Decree of His Majesty the King regarding a comprehensive pardon for a number of those convicted in riot and criminal cases. He stressed that this decision embodies the highest meanings of humanity of His Majesty and his keenness to reunite Bahraini families on the advent of Eid al-Fitr. al -Sumi stressed that the keenness of His Majesty to give the human rights file the utmost importance comes within the framework of the wise approach and policy drawn by His Majesty through a number of initiatives launched by the Kingdom of Bahrain, including the Open prison program and alternative sentences which are in line with best practices at the international level. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Qadibiya Palace to mark the upcoming Eid Al Fitr holiday. The cabinet extended its best wishes to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the people of Bahrain, and all Arab and Islamic nations. The cabinet commended His Majesty the King's assurance of the royal decree pardoning many inmates who had been convicted in rioting and criminal cases, marking the Silver Jubilee of His Majesty's accession to the throne. And on the occasion of Eid Al Fitr, the cabinet affirmed that this reflects His Majesty the King's commitment to maintaining the cohesion and stability of Bahraini society while protecting its social fabric, upholding public interests, safeguarding individual and civil rights. His Royal Highness directed the Ministry of Labor to provide training programs and offer job opportunities to the pardoned individuals so that they can fulfill their social responsibility to contribute to the Kingdom's comprehensive development. The Cabinet affirmed the importance of His Royal Highness's meeting with the Crown Prince and Prime Minister of Saudi Arabia, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, during his Royal Highness's visit to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The Cabinet noted the results of His Royal Highness's visit and its importance in further strengthening the Bahraini-Saudi partnership through multi-sectoral collaboration. The Cabinet commended Saudi Arabia's efforts in serving pilgrims during the holy month of Ramadan with the utmost care, enabling them to perform their prayers safely and comfortably. The cabinet then discussed and approved the following memorandums. A memorandum submitted by the Civil Service Council regarding restructuring and developing the work of several government agencies to increase efficiency and improve performance. A memorandum submitted by the Government Executive Committee regarding a proposal to regulate trade regarding authorized distributors in a way that strengthens and promotes competitiveness for the benefit of consumers and empowers Bahraini business owners who have made long-term contributions to providing goods and services while developing the national economy. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Physical Balance on the Economic Report of Bahrain for 2023. The report showed that the non-oil sector contributed 83.9% to the kingdom's GDP at constant prices, uh, which is the highest in Bahrain's history. This percentage reflects the efforts and cooperation between the public and private sectors to develop the non-oil economic sectors. The report also showed a 2.4% growth in the gross domestic product in 2023 at constant prices, while the non-oil sector grew 3.4% at constant prices. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on a draft law adding a new article to decree law regarding metals. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the service level agreement between the Customs Affairs of the Ministry of Interior and the King Fahad Causeway General Authority and the service level agreement for the King Fahad Causeway passports from Bahrain's side which aimed to improve operational services. 
A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on a draft agreement between Bahrain and Kazakhstan regarding exemption from visa requirements for holders of diplomatic passports. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on the government's response to the three proposals submitted by the Representatives Council. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa attended an iftar banquet hosted by the Crown Prince and Prime Minister of Saudi Arabia, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud at the Safa Palace in Mecca. The iftar banquet was held in honor of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister's visit to Saudi Arabia. His Royal Highness emphasized that meeting between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia are a continuation of uh, the approach taken by previous generations and reflect the deep-rooted historical relations between the two kingdoms and their people. His Royal Highness underscored the importance of further bolstering bilateral ties to achieve the visions and aspirations of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the custodian of the two Holy Mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. His Royal Highness expressed gratitude to His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman for the warm welcome and the hospitality extended to him and his delegation. His Royal Highness wished Saudi Arabia continued security, progress, and prosperity under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques and the support of His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman. The Prime Minister of Pakistan, Mohammed Shehbaz Sharif, and a number of senior officials also attended the iftar banquet. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa departed Saudi Arabia following a visit where he met with His Royal Highness the Saudi Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. His Royal Highness was bid farewell by the Governor of Jeddah, His Highness Prince Saud bin Abdullah bin Jalalawi and a number of senior officials. The Minister of Interior General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa held a meeting with Governors, the General Directorate of Media and Security, Culture and Assistant General Coordinator for Governance attended the meeting. The Interior Minister expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, for issuing a royal decree pardoning convicts of riots and criminal cases. He noted that the royal pardon represents the humanitarian values, programs and initiatives bear the noble royal vision of developing a spirit of belonging to the nation and reinforcing community security. He added that the uh, compassion passionate, caring and inspiring leadership comes within a series of advanced humanitarian initiatives reflecting His Majesty the King's fatherly care for the children of the nation and his dedication to provide a decent living to all citizens, which is a genuine approach that His Majesty the King maintained and a continuation of wise ruling in a state of tolerance, peace and solid national values. The Interior Minister hailed the ongoing support provided by the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to implement rehabilitation projects, initiatives and programs to promote a constructive approach to integrate beneficiaries into society and strengthen the social cohesion. He noted the Ministry's continuation of cooperation with all human rights organizations in implementing humanitarian and civilized initiatives to rehabilitate inmates of the reformation and rehabilitation centers for the citizens' best interests. The Minister highlighted the role of the governance in caring for the residents by providing the required support to reinforce the interaction approach and contribute to a security awareness systems to build a safe community based on national and security awareness. He said that the government's active participation on all occasions supports cooperation and interaction with all segments of the society. The meeting discussed the government's programs and activities to mark Bahrain's celebration of the Silver Jubilee of His Majesty's accession to the throne along with the government's projects and affairs. He asserted the importance of ongoing work to reinforce, inaugurate or integrated ties between various authorities and continuing inter interaction between the governance and citizens to promote community partnership.
The Minister of Municipalities Affairs and Agriculture, Engineer Wa'il Al Mbarak, and the Minister of Works, Engineer Ibrahim Al Hawaj, paid a visit to the sixth constituency of the Northern Governor. The ministers inspected the ongoing developments within the third batch of projects for roads and sanitation. The Minister of Municipalities highlighted the construction of a new park in Block 716 in Al Ramli district, including a 450 meter walkway, a playground area, and sports fields. Al Mbarak added that Al Ramli afforestation project in Block 715 also includes 2,511 trees. For his part, al Hawar said that the implementation of uh, several infrastructure and sanitation projects in the sixth constituency of the Northern Government comes within the Kingdom's plan to enhance the quality of public services and meet the aspirations of citizens. In order to enhance local journalism and support its various successes, the Prime Minister's Award for Journalism provides the opportunity to highlight distinguished people working in this important field. More in this report. Since its launch in 2016, the Prime Minister's Award for Journalism has received great attention and celebrated by those working in the journalistic and media fields in the Kingdom of Bahrain due to what it represents an appreciation and gratitude for the role of the national press in supporting the process of construction and renaissance. The great distinction and diversity witnessed by the award in its eighth edition received wide praise from those working in the field and those interested in it, especially with regards to the new categories included in the award, most notably media students in Bahraini universities, which is an incentive to get them involved in the field at an early stage. The continuous care and great attention that the Kingdom of Bahrain has provided to the press and journalists has led to the creation of the perfect environment from which the people of Bahrain reap the hard work, diligence and remarkable sincerity that successive generations have put into the profession. The Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, chaired by its President Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, announced that Shawwal Crescent has not been cited, and therefore tomorrow, Tuesday, will be the 30th of the month of Ramadan, 1445 AH, corresponding to April 9th, 2024, and Wednesday will be the first day of Eid al Fitr. The chairman of the Sunni Waqf Council, Sheikh Dr. Rashid bin Mohammed al Hajri, inspected the preparations for Eid prayer areas, which will be opened in all governance of the kingdom. Dr. al Hajri affirmed that the leadership is paying considerable attention to preparing mosques and outdoor areas to, in accordance with the directives of His Majesty the King and the support of the government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The Iftar on the Road initiative implemented by the Northern Government continues to reflect the cohesion of the Bahraini social fabric. More in this report. Iftar on the Road is an initiative among a group of Ramadan initiatives which comes with the aim of strengthening harmony and brotherhood as well as preserving the cohesion and social fabric of the Kingdom of Bahrain and protecting road users from traffic accidents resulting from speeding before the time of breaking the fast. In the month of Ramadan, all components of society participate in charitable work, which confirms the values of tolerance, generosity, and humanitarian giving of the Bahraini society. A societal responsibility reflected in the participation of volunteers, as they play a major role in providing more than 500 health meals smoothly and conveniently amid traffic safety procedures under the supervision of security and traffic personnel. These initiatives spread the joy of the Holy Month, strengthen the bonds of fraternal relations between citizens and residents, and contribute to maintaining the development of society. In the last days of the Holy Month of Ramadan, the people of Bahrain go out in a popular celebration, roaming the roads, chanting songs, expressing their sadness at the end of the month. This popular tradition has been passed down from generations to generation and follows the footsteps of the ancestors and embodies their authentic heritage, which is an essential part of the Bahraini identity.